I want to like put the nail in the coffin. I want to finish it out strong and confident and I don't want to win by one tomorrow. I want to win by 10. Hey guys, Johnny Disc Golf here at the 2019 Portland Open with coverage presented by Prodigy Disc. I am standing here with Paige Pierce. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm hanging in there. It's Portland. It's the maybe the best city on tour that we go to, so I'm having a blast. Um, how are you liking you know, being in Portland? We have, I think, three weeks here. Yeah, it's awesome. Oregon's one of my favorite states to visit, and so the fact that we have two tournaments with one week off in between, it's cool to just be able to play on some amazing courses and then also have an off week, kind of. Yeah, what are you doing during your off week? I've been talking to a few people. They've said they're going to play some fun courses, leave town. Like, what, What's your plans? Um, well, as soon as the tournament's over, I'm actually going to head to Olympic National Park my birthday's in a couple days, so go, you know, off the grid camping for a little bit and then come back and get some practice in at Milo, one of my favorite courses, and then probably head up to Bend and go check out Bevel. Yeah, I was going to say, have you made it out there yet or is this going to be your first time checking out the brewery? Yeah, it'll be my first time in the brewery, but I've had plenty of their beers, you know, at the GBOs and uh -huh. here they're selling them right after the round. They have them for sale. So I've had the beer, but haven't been to the location yet. So I'm excited to see it. I know. I feel like after Beaver State Fling, there's going to be like a mass migration of all the disc golfers just like rolling through Bend for a night. Um, we are here at Blue Lake Park, though, not at Milo yet. Yes. Um, how are you liking the course? Yesterday it was really rainy for the men but not so much for the for the fpo division how are you liking it so far i love this course i think you know the last time we got to run it was at 2014 worlds and uh i forgot how much i did love it um it's just it's it has the technical vibe without really having to manage trees yeah. um so you really have to know where your disc is going to land but yeah, it's it's really interesting golf and it keeps you on your toes because every shot you have OB risk. There's every single fairway has rope lines, so it's tight. Is it like when I came here, it kind of reminds me of uh, not Smuggler's Notch, but Fox Run specifically. Does that kind of, do you get that feel as well? Yeah, definitely. I think a little bit less elevation. There's not many holes that are uphill or downhill. Um, some of them do play, the basket will play on the little side hill like that, but not a whole lot of up and down. But other than that, it's, yeah, you nailed it pretty much like Fox Run. Yeah. So you said last time we heard 2014, I believe that was when Katrina took Worlds, her only World Championship. Is that something that like, it's looking like it's going to be you two, you know, battling it out during the final round. Is that something that like, you think about it all? Or is that something playing in your head? Or are you just not even thinking about that and going about 2019 style? Yeah, it definitely is in my head. Um, every World Championship I've played is, is plays in my head, um, win or lose. And this one was a close battle. Kat got me by just a couple. But, you know, in the final nine, it was either of ours to win. And, and uh, you know, on my first practice round when we got here, it was like a movie replaying in my head. So um, it's, it's definitely in my head. And, you know, I'm just kind of like a continuation of that world's kind of to me. Wow. So it's, it means a lot, this one. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to finish it out tomorrow. Great. Well, you guys did tie after the first round, um, and then played, uh, just finished your second round. Um, how did it go out there and heading into the third round? How are you feeling like physically, mentally, emotionally? How, how are you feeling? Um, I feel good today. Wasn't quite as good score wise or just, Honestly, like execution wise, I uh, went OB a couple more times than I did yesterday. And yesterday I kind of hit, I hit three circle two putts. And today um, I just wasn't connecting, missing. And uh, I was still running them though. I was missing high at least. So I gave myself the chance, but I was leaving some long comebackers. And, and uh, yeah, it just, it didn't feel great, but you know, I'm still in a good position. And so I'm just looking to improve on that tomorrow. Sure. Um, in years past and specifically last year, you were so dominant to start the season. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, not to say that you didn't, you weren't playing great, but you weren't just quite as dominant as you were to start the year. And then this year, kind of the flip, right? You didn't start quite as dominant, but then you had that stretch like Nick Hyde, where you won mm -hmm. off the very last, uh, very last hole, taking the Eagle to win. Yeah. How, how does that like, how do you flip the switch and maybe turn it back to beginning of last year? Um. You know, those tournaments are behind you. I think that's something that's really cool about disc golf. You know, we're competing against the same people every week, kind of, but on different courses and the score resets, kind of. So um, I try not to think about those in in the thought of, like, what can I, what did I do wrong? Yeah. But more like, 
you know, forget about that, you know, think about my mistakes and correct them on the practice field, but then don't think about those in the tournament or try to anyway. Yeah, sure. um, so I think as far as like, you know, the way the season went, it was definitely a lot. Uh, I had a lot of momentum because mm -hmm. I didn't lose a tournament yeah. until June. Yeah. And uh, so it was just, you know, walking up to the first tee, like almost like cocky confident yeah. because, you know, I knew that they were all scared. And at this point, it's like, it's a completely different story that I'm telling. It's like, you know, not a sequel. It's a di co totally different yes. series. Okay. And, you know, I'm continuously having to chase down the lead this year. And uh, sometimes I've done it and other times I haven't. And, uh, you know, this weekend I'm on the top of the leaderboard. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully tell a different story this weekend. Yeah. Is that, is that motivating? Like, um, you know, you said it's just been a different story. Does that motivate you to get like to come out in that third round firing or do, does it like get on top of you a little bit? Like, dang, I'm, I'm not leading, you know? No, I honestly, it is motivating because I, I want to like put the nail in the coffin. I want to finish it out strong and confident and I don't want to win by one tomorrow. I want to win by 10. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and throw all the shots that I know I can. This courts plays really well for my game. I just, you know, if I just, if I'm out of position, don't go for it. Yeah. Uh, that's what got me into trouble yeah. today. I, I know what I can do on the whole. My drive maybe put me out of position and I still went for it. And so, you know, I'm not going to do that tomorrow and just play play my game. Yeah. Um, let's switch it up to Worlds because I want, I'm want i curious about your take and, and generally the entire FPO division's take on playing different courses. I feel like that's what we see, right? We either see two different courses or different tee pads on mm -hmm. the same course. Mm -hmm. Where do you how, where do you fall? Like, would you rather see one course modified or like playing Sunset instead of Eureka like this year at Worlds? Um, it's it's hard to say. I don't really care what the course is. I just want it to be fair and challenging. Yeah. Um. So I got a lot of backlash last year after Ledgestone because I posted that. I didn't enjoy the course. Mm -hmm. It wasn't challenging and I played terribly on it, yeah. but it was because, you know, the holes were like 200, 270 yeah. feet and Katrina and I, and lot, I mean, half of the fe female division was throwing putters yeah. and, you know, we're at this point trying to ace them because it just seems easy. And yes, that was mental error on our part. And, uh, but it's just like, we don't as professionals and we're traveling to the best courses in the world. Mm -hmm and all of them have a different uh difficulty you know like fox run we just talked about yeah. was elevated this one's just super roped um but northwood i didn't find much of a challenge so i was like uh i don't know just trying to find other ways to challenge myself sure. out there and so you know that's the course i have to play so i have mm -hmm. to wipe that thought from my head and i have to love northwood mm -hmm. um but i also know that dana and um, Nate Heinold and all the crew in Peoria has made the course harder. They took our feedback and made it more challenging. So you'll get to see the best players in the world throwing shots that are impressive, yeah. not just kind of throwing up a putter up mm -hmm. there and, and who can hit the better putt. So yeah. um, I think that I don't really care what the course is as long as it challenges our skill level. And I think I, I hear that the renovations yeah. ha are going to do that. So I'm excited to see them. Good. Yeah. I, I think that there's like a fine line between, you know, a course where we see the FPO division, like all over par and, you know, like a sunset or like a Northwoods where it's really attackable, almost too attackable. Yeah. Are there any courses on tour that like you think about as that good balance of, you know, difficult, but also scorable so that, you know, the division can be well under par. Honestly, I think this one right mm -hmm. here, blue, like, you know, you saw the leaderboard shooting, uh, you know, five, t four or five, six under par. And um, even some girls from the second card today shot four under, three under. So you still have those chances to get the birdies and come out yeah. under par. But also, if you're off by this much, you're taking double, triple bogeys. So yeah. I think this is a really good scoring separator out here. And places like Maple Hill as well. Yeah. Um, let's get off of disc golf for just one sec. I want to okay. talk about your van. Okay. okay? Love it. But what I love most is that you've got a new sticker and a new sponsor on the backside. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Um, OTB. So I didn't actually even know who they were until the Pro Tour last year. They had the, you know, the elevated baskets yeah. that have the white cage. Um, I saw those on there and I 
then this year, you know, they have giant signs up and I actually, it was crazy how it happened. I started throwing gatekeepers as a, mm -hmm. my new mid range. Mm -hmm. And I posted on one of the trilogy fan pages, like, Hey, does anybody have any more of these? I need some backups. And this guy named Danny Corbett messaged me and said, he s just sent me a photo with yeah. like 20 of them. And he goes, how many do you need? And I was like, I'll take 20. two, <laughs> <laughs> two for sure yeah. would be nice. And he's like, well, while I have you here, you know, we're looking for some players to sponsor. And, um, you know, obviously DD is already a disc golf shop, so yeah. I can't necessarily be sponsored by another shop. Mm -hmm. But I told him if you want to buy some ad space, essentially on the yeah. van, then, you know, it travels 40,000 miles a year yeah. and, you know, yeah. people are going to see it. So, um, yeah, we've been co in communication and working together and he's just such an awesome guy. And I hear that you guys yeah. work together as well. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I was kind of excited to see you guys yeah. and, and him branching out into the, you know, more of the pros. Like right. it, it's just good because yeah, he's a Stockton guy out of, you know, NorCal yeah. It's just relatively close to where I'm at in San mm -hmm. Francisco. So it's good to see, you know, wider range of brands getting involved with the sponsorship. I think that's like important just, you know. To, to save it from just being DD, Innova, yeah. you know, Prodigy, whatever you want to say, putting money back in. So, um, are there any anything else that you're working on? Anything new coming down the road? Um, what's what's up in the life of Paige? Like as far as just anything. Anything basically? you want to promote? Do you have like a new disc coming out? Um, anything like this? Well, I just got the deputy with all all every plastic. The deputy now has my name on it. Nice. So yeah, any any deputy. So that's pretty cool. Those just released about a week ago, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I got a new YouTube series, Nice Line. Oh, yeah, I, thank you. Yeah. I meant to mention that. I've been loving those. Um, not to distract from the plugs, but how, what's it been like tech, taking a step onto the media side of things, you know, rather than just being strictly on the course? Um, honestly, it's something that's always, like, I have a ve very visual brain. Um, like I was just saying, it felt like a movie out there. Yeah. Um, so, like, I've always seen this happening, and uh, it, it had already been happening, just not in front of a yep. camera sitting down together yep. after the round. So I just thought, you know, disc golf fans are so intrigued and just like very curious to, mm -hmm. to see more, to learn more, to, to come out to tournaments, all kinds of stuff. And so, you know, if these things are already happening, why not just film it and, yeah. and let the people kind of get a look inside of the FPO division. And, and I think it, my goal, is for one for people to learn things for me to learn as well and then also to kind of just gain more aware awareness to each of the amazing people that we have in the fpo division mm -hmm. because we don't get as much media coverage sure. we're starting to but you know if they start to learn the the characters that we have then you know we'll get more fans involved and and uh yeah i think it's it's pretty cool to get into the mental space of a player when yeah. they're lining up a shot no I, I totally agree it's honestly like the majority of the reason why i started my youtube channel is to give a wider range of players a voice you know yeah. it's, it's cool to hear you know guys like james conrad or kevin jones he's been doing more commentary now mm -hmm. or yourself or katrina or anybody just get the thought processes so yeah. I, I really appreciate the work you're doing and it's honestly it's turning out great so thank you yeah. thank you um I want to get you ahead here on this. Uh, I know there's a ton of Paige Pierce fans out there. Is there anything you'd like to say to anybody pulling for you back home? Yeah, I mean, honestly, just thank you. I don't know if I could ever say that enough. It's 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 such a crazy feeling to come to a course, go to hole one, and you know they say your name like you're teeing off, and not only do you have a gallery of people there actually in person clapping and wearing your shirts and and asking you to sign you know those Paige Pierce deputies, but also at home, you know all the people that are sending me messages and stuff like that. So um, it's it's pretty cool to feel like I have a family of you know hundred thousand people that are out rooting rooting me on towards what I'm striving for in life. Yeah. Well, I. You totally deserve it, right? A lot of work, well earned, and I appreciate your time coming on and doing the interview. Um, for all you guys at home, if you'd like to check out coverage of all things disc golf, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for checking out that interview. If you'd like to support me, check out patreon.com slash johnnydiscgolf. And if you'd like to support my sponsors, check out Prodigy Disc. I am loving the D2, the H2V2, H3V2. They are making awesome plastic, and they're just generally good people.